video, we'll discuss the SSH model, the sue schrieffer higer model. We will concentrate on the symmetries that appears in this model and how they lead to end modes. Here are pictures of sue Schrieffer and Higer. The SSH model was first introduced to describe a chain of carbon atoms, so that it's very similar to the rice mellie model, but the atoms A and B are simply the carbon A atoms, so that the, S the SSH model is, the, is equal to the rice mellie model, but without the mass term, because the two atoms are identical. So A and B are actually uh, these two atoms here, and they have the same mass. So that we will write that the SSH, SSH, is in fact the rice mellie model with M equal to zero. Now in polyacetylene, spontaneously, the system rearranged in such a way that U is larger than V or V is larger than U. So we really have a situation which is very similar to the rice mellie model. So V is not equal to U. Now let's start to discuss what are the properties of this model. So first, let's assume that U is equal to zero. So for U equal to zero, the blue lines will just not be there, right? Uh, U was representing, representing the coupling between A and B in the same unit cell. Now it's zero, there is no coupling there. So the, if we have a finite chain, the first atom is disconnected from the chain as well as the last uh, atom. The energies of this state, the energy of these, of each of these states will be equal to zero. So we have a state at zero energy. Now the interesting thing is that this is a very special case. The interesting thing is that this will remain in the same way. This energy state is remained zero at zero as long as the gap is not closed as we change u and v. So I just want to remind you when the gap is closed and when it's open. So we have the HSS in k-space, if we think about periodic chain, will, be, will behave like that. And we can formally write it as, in the follow, as follow. Z is equal to U plus V e to the minus i k. The Hamiltonian H S S H of k is equal to zero, zero, z, z star. The, the eigen energies will be epsilon k will be equal to plus minus square root of z square, which is equal to square root of u square plus v square plus two u v cosine k. So that epsilon k is equal to zero, that means that the gap is closed for special situations when u is equal to v, then it happens that k equal to pi, and for u equal to minus v, minus v at k equal to zero. So we will keep these energies as we write them here, we'll keep them for the next slide so that we can follow the spectrum as we change the parameter, especially we, we, it will be important to understand where the gap is closed. So now we are ready to discuss the symmetries of the SSH model. The first symmetry that we will discuss is the time reversal symmetry. We chose u, both u and v as real numbers. So u is equal to u star and v is equal to V star. This is also a property of the SSH model. And that's what will guarantee time reversal symmetry. So in order to discuss the time reversal symmetry, symmetry in the system, we have to look on the operation of time reversal operation on the Hamiltonian. So in general, this is a statement for general Hamiltonian. We write the Hamiltonian in sum of K operators that depend on an index alpha. This will be the atom index A or B and Hamiltonian just depend on k and two indices of, of the atoms and C beta. This is the general structure of an Hamiltonian. The time reversal operation on this Hamiltonian take 
do two things. First, you take the operator c dagger alpha of k to c dagger alpha of minus k. The same thing for c beta of k, take it to c beta of minus k. Okay? And because h are simple numbers in this uh, Hamiltonian of C numbers, we take the complex conjugation here. So now, if h star k, all the component of h uh, uh, alpha beta star k is equal to h alpha beta minus k, then we can substitute here, this is by h alpha beta of minus k, and this will be simply equal to the original Hamiltonian. So in this situation, we will have tau h tau minus 1 is equal to h. We can mul multiply by tau, the time reversal operation in both sides here, and we get tau h equal to h tau, so that time, the time reversal operation and the Hamiltonian commute. So that, let me write it here, if h star of k is equal to h of minus k, that means that we have time reversal symmetry. So we'll keep that, all that on the blackboard so that we'll remember that. So now we are ready to continue and discuss the properties of the, the time reversal symmetry properties of the SSH model. And we have another properties of the time reversal operation. Of course, if I operate with it twice, I come back to the same result. So tau square is equal to one. Okay, then to summarize, these are the symmetries of the, uh, we discussed the symmetries of the SSH model, and tau is an anti-unitary, anti-unitary because we take the complex conjugation. Commuting, we saw that it's a commuting operator, and this is the time reversal symmetry that we have. So what we saw is that tau, SSHK tau, this is the operation of the time reversal operator on the Hamiltonian, we have to check that h star k is equal to h minus k, and we also have tau square equal to one. So let's calculate what is tau h s k tau. I wrote explicitly the Hamiltonian here in k space of a tau. So when we operate with tau on this Hamiltonian, this is what we have. U is going to use tau, v to v star. I don't touch k, sigma goes to sigma star, v to v star, and sigma y to sigma y star. Now we already assume that u is equal to u star and v is equal to v star. So that means that we will have here u plus v cosine of k. And the Pauli matrix sigma x is a real matrix, so this will be equal to sigma x. Plus, let me keep it, uh, the sign here as, as it is, v sine of k. And we know that sigma y is equal to sigma y star is equal to minus, equal to minus sigma y, so that we will have that result. Now, this is precisely equal to h of minus k. So, uh, if we uh, look here on our definition for having time reversal symmetry, we see that the SSH model have time re the SSH model has time reversal symmetry. Another symmetry that we have in the, for the SSH model is a sublattice symmetry. This is because we have atoms A and B, and we never allow a coupling between AA or BB. This was not allowed, only between A and B and B and A. So this appears to be a unitary, there is no complex conjugation, conjugation anti-commuting sublattice symmetry, and uh, it's written here precisely that due to the absence of coupling between AA or BB. So the def by definition, S is defined by a operation with the matrix sigma Z on the SSH model. Because it includes only sigma X and sigma Y, that give us minus H SSA K right? Because sigma x and sigma y anti-commute with sigma z. So this is the result of the, um, the sublattice symmetry. 
So let's see what else can we conclude from this symmetry. First of all, my claim is that S square is equal to one, and also I want to show you that it's anti-commuting, so that H, S, S, H, K is equal to zero. So first of all, how we, we conclude that S square is equal to one? We look at, on S square H, S square, this is equal to S minus H, S, which in turn, it's equal to H, right? Now, in order to prove that it's anti-commute, I multiply by S on, uh, I multiply by S here and there, so that we get, and using the fact that S squared is equal to one, and I get that minus S H is equal to H S, taking that to that uh, uh, to the other side of the equation, we get that S is anti-commuting with H. There is another uh, symmetry in the, mo in, the, in the SSH model, the particle hole symmetry, and this is an anti-unitary, anti-commuting uh, uh, symmetry. So C is simply defined by S times tau, the sublattice times the time reversal, giving the particle hole symmetry. You can check using the similar um, similar treatment that I did before, that C square is equal to one, and it's an anti-commuting uh, operator. So to summarize, the SSH model has three symmetry, tau, S, and C. And we'll see later on in the course that uh, this belongs to the BDI class, when we discuss the classification of topological state a, uh, a system that has both these three symmetries, tau, s, and c, and c squared is equal to one, s squared is equal to one, tau squared is equal to one, is known as the BD1 class. So what I want to show right now is that the absence or presence of this end mode is related to a, a winding number that is changed only when the gap is closed. So using the sub lattice symmetry that we have before, we have h goes to minus h, so that for a state with energy epsilon, there is always a state with energy minus epsilon. So in this situation, when we have this uh, local state at, uh, at A, there must be, this state must stick to zero as long as we have a gap, or they come in pair somehow. Two energies are plus and minus, not at zero. For example, uh, for this uh, molecule type behavior, we'll have positive and negative uh, energy. And what I want to show is that as long as we have a gap, this state does not disappear and is related to a winding number. So as I hinted before, this winding number will be related to the structure of the Hamiltonian, which is described completely by this parameter z that we have here in the model. So let's assume for a second, for a moment, that u is equal to zero. So now if we look on z as a function of a as a complex number in the complex plane. So for u equal to zero, z simply is a unit uh, for u, u equal to zero and v let's say equal to one. This is simply a circle in the complex plane which go around the origin. So the winding number, we would say, the winding number will be equal to one in this case. Now, if we switch on v, you see, we put this blue uh, number, we switch on u, of course. If we switch on u here, then, uh, but still we keep u smaller than v, then this unit circle move a bit to the, the right, but it still uh, continue to go around the origin. The winding number is one, still one. Now we continue and make u equal to v. So for u equal to v, see what happened? The gap is closed exactly at k equal to pi. And that's what we will see here. k equal to pi, z touches the, the origin, and the energy is zero. The gap is closed. Of course, in this situation, the winding number is not uh, well defined. There, there is no gap in the system. And as we continue to increase v, now v is larger than u, the circle does not go around the origin. So here the, num the winding number, the winding number is zero. 
And now what we saw is that for uh, the case when the winding number was one, we, we had this uh, uh, end mode at A on the site A, and for winding number zero, we will not have this end mode. If I make V equal to zero, it's very clear that this end mode disappear. So the winding around the origin is related to the presence or the absence of this uh, end mode. And later on with the course we will relate these winding, number to, 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 winding numbers to topological invariants. So to summarize, we study the SSH model, which is the Rice-Mele model with m equal to zero, and it has the following symmetries. The time reversal symmetry, the sublattice symmetry, and the particle hole symmetry, which we denote by C for charge conjug conjugation. Tau square, we found that tau square is equal to S square equal to e C squared, they are all equal to one. Also, we found that there are end modes in the system. Uh, so if we include next nearest neighbor uh, tunneling, just like in this uh, uh, figure, then we will have two end modes, not uh, one, but we will have two end uh, modes. That, of course, as long as we keep the symmetry in the problem, the sublattice symmetry, we do not allow coupling between uh, two A's. And formally, this is done by writing Z, which here Z was equal to U plus V e to the minus I K. We have to write Z equal to U plus V e to the minus two I K. So that as K go from zero to two pi, uh, Z wind twice around the origin. That is if V is larger than U. Now to conclude this um, um, video, I would like to suggest an exercise. And this is a, of the following type. So the exercise is to find a, a charge on the boundary in which we have in one part of the system a winding number which is equal to zero, and in the other part of the system a winding number which is equal to one. So in, in the left part, let's say, we'll have u larger than v, so that the winding number of z is equal to zero. And on the right-hand side, we will have v larger than u, so that the winding number is one. And the exercise is to find the charge on the boundary between uh, the two. Now, you have all the tools to calculate that charge. What we have to do is to start uh, from everywhere in the sample u larger than v, and then to change adiabatically parameters so that we pump charge from one part of the system to the other part. We have to uh, be careful to make the, the pumping such that we always have E gap. And we know that as we go in the SSH model to go between U larger than V to uh, V larger than U, we must close the gap. So in order to do so, we rather use the rice mele model with M larger than uh, zero in intermediate steps so that we always have a gap and we can calculate the charge that we pump in the system. If we will have periodic boundary condition, that means that we pump charge from one uh, edge of the system on the boundary between the uh, different winding number to the other part. And the exercise is to show that actually the charge here will be a uh, one half. So thank you and let's continue to the next video.